Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to do a little watercolor tutorial. Now the easiest way to watercolor is to think of it like you're cooking or baking. There's going to be multiple parts to each creation and illustration you go to do, and you want to start certain parts at different times so the whole thing is done at the same time just like a dinner. So whatever takes longest to cook, so to say, so to speak, you would want to do that first. So we are going to be painting a kingfisher. This is a blue and sort of brownish bird. I'm going to link the um, picture I am using, the reference photo. It is from a royalty free site. And that way you can have that along with this tutorial and kind of follow along and figure out what you want to do. Now the first thing I'm going to do is the breast shape, which I think of sort of as a crescent. Now I am going to do a wet on wet technique, which is why I'm doing the breast first. And this is because it's going to be wetter than the rest of it. So I'm going to water shape a little bit of a crescent. It starts here, it kind of goes out. Think of it as a macaroni noodle, only larger. And I'm going to go in with, let's see, I want to do yellow ochre. I am using my Winsor Newton Cotman. There is a warm and cool red, a warm and cool blue, a warm and cool yellow. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to kind of lay this down. And I know that I'm going to need to go in and make sure that this is still very wet for when I go to lay down my brown. And I want the brown to be wet because I want it to feather out like natural feathers. So think of it in terms of that. Here's a little bit of the tail. Now, for the brown, I am using burnt umber. Just a little bit. I am using a four round brush. You can use whatever size brush you want and do whatever size feels the most comfortable for you. But I am going to do little strokes and I want them to bloom. That's why we're doing this wet on wet. We laid down an undercolor, we underpainted, and now we are doing the brown and the brown is going to bloom out and make it look like actual feathers. And that's what we want. And we are going to allow for that to dry. I am then gonna go in with a warm yellow. I'm going to do my cadmium yellow. And that is going to be the under part of the chin it is sort of shaped like a triangle that gave up. I'm doing all this in terms of shapes. So you can kind of see how I pull apart and how I create these designs. Now this set doesn't have a black, so I will be using a Mars black that I have in a pan, but any black would work. Ivory black, this one is just a highly granulating one. This is what I happen to have in a pan. Super handy. Now the bottom of the beak is black and that is another really long skinny triangle. And you see it's starting to bleed into. So I need to use way less water. If you're having bleeding issues, remove the water. And you can kind of lift and then make sure you have a little towel nearby. Again, this is how we learn, this is how we create. Now, the top portion of this beak is a very, very pale gray. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm on the palette portion of my paint set and I want a very light pale gray top beak. I don't want it full dark gray. So, add a little bit of color. That is the top beak portion. Now, we are almost halfway in. I am going to go in with my fallow blue. This is one of the two blues in this set. The other one is ultramarine and I am going to start with the blue portions. There's a little bit of blue on top. 
There's a little bit of blue that comes down here, and it's a very dry brush I have. There's not a lot of water. And I'm gonna come down here, and you can see how dry my brush is. I need to be able to control this water, or I'm gonna have bleeding everywhere. So, here is the blue of the head. Here is portions of the bird. And I'm going to dry this brush and go in with a little more ochre. Just a little tiny bit of water. And that's what watercolor practice is, is figuring out how much water you need in certain parts. So I am now carving out sort of the space needed for the eye. There is a little bit of, mm, I would say, pale ivory on the bird. And you can either leave that spot blank or add a little tiny bit, bring down a little bit of color. You can use that like negative space. These are all little sort of triangle shapes. Now the bird has very, in this picture, it looks like orange feet. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ochre and I'm gonna take a little bit of my cadmium red and I'm gonna mix them together. And that is going to be the orange for the feet I'm going to use. Make sure I don't have any pet hair on my brush because that's not a good idea. And I am going to come down and it looks like he's got two going forward and one going back. And then this one looks even shorter and even darker. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna add more red because that is needed to make that look like it's a little bit farther away. And I'm just gonna gently touch that into the already wet paint. I think some of my shadows need to be touched up. So I'm gonna go back into my ochre or my uh, burnt sienna a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of depth. And then I'm gonna smooth that out with a little bit of water now, for the eye, the eye is going to be black. Now you can use the same brush, or if you have a tinier, tinier detail brush, that will actually help you with control. Again, any black pigment would work. If you feel more comfortable using pen and making this mixed media, that would work as well. Now we're going to do a black eye but we're not going to make the whole thing black. There is a very clear white highlight on this eye that is reflecting the light. And we wanna capture that. That's what makes these eyes look realistic is when there is highlight within the eye. So there is our eyeball and we can go back and add a little bit of fine tuning for the beak a little bit. And we can add a little bit of black detailing or gray within the blue. Has a little tiny bits of black in there. And sort of create the look that there are the polka dots within using some of the black. And then they are lines, they are vertical lines towards the bottom. Now, for the claw, the claws are black. And again, the finer detail your brush, probably the easier this is. And now we need something for this bird to be sitting on, otherwise he is sort of floating in space. So I'm going to go back into my burnt umber, but I want it to be, I want to control all the moisture that is going to be added into this branch. Now I would say this branch is infinitely more gray brown and so if you want to add a little bit of black from your black pan with the burnt umber, that would look a bit more realistic. 
But again, I'm trying to give you a 10 minute watercolor tutorial for this bird. And so this is where I am at. So this is a King of Fisher. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was very, very quick. Again, the less water you use, the more you can control and come back and add, and the quicker it becomes creating some of these pieces. Water in drying time are, take the longest, so that's kind of something you're gonna wanna think about. And I am losing, I'm losing this little guy right here just because it's pretty wet. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.